Sedans and crossovers worthy of your consideration from 22, 23, and 24. Wouldn't you like to know which vehicles stand up to the train scrutiny of a master mechanic? If so, you're in luck. Today we have Alex Stevens here, who is our seasoned automotive expert on the show. To be clear, we are not saying that the vehicles presented today are the image of perfection, but they are generally quite low in annual repair costs. We are saying they are worthy of mention on this video and are worthy of your consideration. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy. For the last 15 years, I've been publishing videos on YouTube advising consumers about car buying tactics. But now, with the great fortune of having our own in-house automotive expert, we can also advise you on what types of vehicles you should consider. In this show, we'll be talking about more recent vehicles, the 22 through 24 models. Alex Stevens joins me in a moment. In this show, we are starting with the sedans first. Crossovers will follow. I've had a chance to review this list too and do my own homework, so I'll be chipping in added information as we go along. All right, Alex, welcome back. Let's take it away and start with the sedans that made the list first. Awesome. Good to be here, Kevin. Um, yeah, so first on our list, I would say it'd be the Toyota Camry, which, I mean, I'm sure the viewers, when they said, what are sedans or crossovers that you'd recommend or be good? I'm sure the Toyota was like one of the first things that popped to your mind. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they have a proven track record since the dawn of the Camry. I mean, it's a great – everything they build, everything they've always built is great. Um, and including the hybrid, they've always had a very good – I mean, look at the Prius. I mean, not, it's not, not on this list and not necessarily to Dan, I would say, but the Prius and the hybrid technology, they've proven it, and they just carried that on to the Camry as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, great, great vehicle. And, and for, like, the annual repair costs, like, that's, you know, just, just under $400 a year for something awesome. like that. So – and I see Camrys. I have seen Camrys be in that three hundred thousand mile like time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, I know someone who has a five hundred thousand mile Camry. I think he still has it, but I mean, he didn't. It was still original engine, original transmission. Great That's car, amazing. So, um, and, you know, the next vehicle I would like to jump to would be Honda Accord. I'm mean, just like the Camry. You mentioned Honda. Um, you're gonna you're gonna pick up the next word will be reliability, mm -hmm. long term vehicle. And we covered this um, in our. Uh, and our SUVs, right? Like the pilots and, you know, those vehicles are all very strong contenders. So, right. um, and, you know, 200,000 miles is pretty common to see out of those or even greater. Um, so, and they do have a hybrid um, option. And once again, I think their technology is very well proven. And those are like right around $400 a year for so annual very cost. Very similar to the Camry. Yeah. I mean, not, not, a, not a out of the realm, you know. Um, I'll tell you what, when you're talking about vehicles like this that have very low annual repair costs, why the heck would you ever spend thousands of dollars on an extended warranty it's true i agree i mean you know put that money away put it in a savings account you know or just like maintenance your vehicle take care of it right um whether that's you doing your own maintenance or taking it to a dealer or a replica shop those things are all are all factors to that you know so all right so the mazda 3 is up next yeah mazda 3 i like mazda i think they make a great car um they've always kind of had a pretty good vehicle throughout the years um and yeah i mean that vehicle you definitely once again you'll see those vehicle open that 200 thousand mile range um, mm -hmm. but they've been well maintained well loved obviously vehicles that are in assault belts of the united states are going to maybe have a lower potential with that just because of the nature of, the, of your condition right. you're living in but the annual fee for that or annual repair cost for that is like just over 400 bucks around that four 450 ish range so you cool. know very very reasonable i think um next on the list would be a hyundai Sonata, which we've talked about. Uh, very, very first show, I do believe, we're like, don't buy a Hyundai. But that's a previous generation. We talked about this in our last show that in SUVs. That Hyundai has come a long way. They've really, you know, started to see, I think, improvements. And, uh, you know, we talked about this earlier. They have a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty. Very cool. I think they're, once they're trying to build that robust. And, you know, they have pretty replicable engines. Um, earlier models were not so good. And we've seen them kind of start to get the reliability out of these engines and transmission. So, so then cool. they introduced this huge warranty, which... Yeah. was there to, to try to reinstill some of that consumer confidence. 100%, yeah. And, you know, for that, that thing has a still pretty reasonable annual um, repair cost. It's like just over 450 range a year for something like that, you know. Kia um, K5 is yeah. next on the list. Kia, um, another vehicle with that. Same thing, similar to the Hyundai, 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. 
you know, it's it's showing itself. We talked about this be- before mm-hmm. that a lot of these manufacturers that are same manufacturers, just different names, are using the same engine transmissions over multiple vehicle lines. So, like, right. if you get a Hyundai Sonata, it has good good reliability of this engine. So you'll see it in the Kia, right? And its annual repair cost is like just over four seventy, you know, just mm-hmm. under five hundred. So. Next vehicle on the list, though, I you know I'm I'm a huge fan of these vehicles. I like them. I think if you live in Colorado, you probably can guess it's Subaru Subaru Legacy Subaru um, as a whole. Those are really good. They're all wheel drive. Um, they're actually one of the leading all wheel drive sedans, and mm-hmm. they show for themselves from a, from a uh, a fit and finish, reliability, performance aspect. You know. Good sprint, you know, spirited driving. Um, the Boxster engine, it sounds cool. It's unique, um, you know, and I've seen those go high 200s all day long with good maintenance. And, you know, the reason these do have a higher, you know, I would say annual or potential repair cost throughout its annualized model, which is like just over 560 in that 580 range, you know, mm-hmm. 600 range, is because they do have a time of belt. They're known to have time of belt. They have to be serviced. And some some Hondas are fit into this crowd as well, Kevin, is where they have a time of belt. Time belt needs to be serviced. On a regular maintenance schedule that it has, usually it's like right around anywhere from ninety to one hundred and ten, hundred thousand miles. Most 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 people say at every hundred thousand miles have a time belt done. It can be a little less, a little before, a little after that. So like there's a little bit higher cost because of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I mean, obviously the the kind of oils and you know those kind of things, filters and so forth. So and you know most two point fives, whether it's a you know, turbo or non turbo, they just they they require a little extra. Uh, maintenance so something that so this particular vehicle the annual repair costs are 563 bucks a year yep for the exact yeah if you want the exact number for sure yeah the nissan altima is up next yeah uh nissan i think i think nissan's actually up there to some degree when i think of a honda i think of you know them uh toyota from like a, a engineering standpoint they build you know pretty good vehicles that their engineering is very applicable um, they've had, you know, we've talked about this before, CVT stuff, but they've come a long way. Mm-hmm. And their annual repair cost is, you know, 483 bucks, so like just under $500, you know, um, give or take, depending on where you get it repaired. So, like, that's a good, good, effective vehicle that you could enjoy, you know. Um, this one's actually interesting to me. Our next one is uh, Volkswagen Jetta. Um, people think that's an import. Mm-hmm. What, what? But Volkswagen's honestly had a track record. Uh, one of my... One of my mentors, uh, he's a massive Volkswagen fan, loves him, and he's had. I've, I've watched him buy multiple throughout the years, and he's had great, great, great um, reliability at all those. Now, obviously, because it is an import, because it is a you know not a. I mean, even they're built in the U.S. You know, they're built in Chattanooga, Tennessee, is where some of these Volkswagens are made. They just by nature their parts are more expensive to, just mm-hmm. for importing. So they're like just over six hundred dollars um, for for the rep- annual repair costs or something like that. So next on the list is the fancy version of Toyota. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, basically a fancy Camry. You know, yeah. um, it's all it is. You know, um, I mean, yeah. W- there's not much to say that it, you're you're buying a similar repair cost. You know, the dealer the dealer make like let's say you take it to a dealer, right? They may have a higher rate because it's a Lexus. Right. Right. Not just a Toyota, um, but yeah, that's like you know just over four hundred and sixty um, for repair costs. And awesome, like that. so very affordable. Yeah, not bad at all. Um, Chevy Malibu would be the next vehicle I want to jump on our list with. Um, overall, like pretty good, kind of proven platform there. Um, now a mass of the one point five liter uh, turbo, um, pretty pretty decent. You know, that's a good economy car. That's like economy to cost aspect, and its repair cost is pretty pretty reasonable. I mean, we're, we're seeing like a five, just over five hundred dollars for something mm-hmm. like that. So not 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 terrible. And um, we talked about this before. Like it's one of the last American made sedans. Yeah. Like, like Ford kind of went away from this. They've kind of gone to more SUV, which is I get it. Like people are moving towards crossovers and SUVs and so forth. But like, yeah, it's one of the last sedans that GM makes. That's like an economy sedan, I would say. Sure. So, so next up on the list are the non-domestic crossovers. Toyota's on the list. I right. mean, the, the Rav Four. Uh, my parents have a Rav Four, 
And they've had tons of RAV fours uh, from viewers who are contacting us for hassle free car buying assistance. Yep. And we have found uh, several or a lot of good deals out there on the RAV. Yeah, they're they're a good car. They they make a good. They're good. Uh, and like I said, you know, what, let's talk. Let's stop for a second. Talk about why are we seeing the word crossovers? Hey, some people don't want a full size SUV. Right. But they still want to, you know, have that room, have a have a hatch area, or you know, maybe be able to tow a small little camper thing or something like that, right? Um, or have have a little more space without having to go to a massive, big, honking American made V eight or or like some a big cool, SUV has a yeah. truck frame and a truck yeah, right, and you know, truck transmission, truck truck tires, you know, yeah. truck cost, right? Yep. So if I think about the the why we have crossovers, it's like, hey, I need a little more room. But I don't want to have the price tag of all that maintenance costs or that. So that's why we see manufacturers really saying, "Hey, let's just get rid of the sedan. Let's put all that technology and that, that revenue towards or uh, you know funding towards building a vehicle that will beat more more people." So yeah, crossovers are great. And the annual repair costs, like for example, the Toyota is like three hundred fifty bucks. Like incredibly, <laughs> pretty much pretty anybody reasonable. can afford that. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. I think. Um, and once again, uh, moving on, the next vehicle will be the Mazda CX-5. You know, that's mm-hmm. a good-looking car. I actually would say, maybe some might not agree with this, but I think that Mazda CX-5 is moving towards, like, a blend of, like, the Lexus and Toyota as far as, like, luxury. It's, like, in between the two. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to just a Toyota, but I don't want to buy a Lexley paid price Lexus. Mm-hmm. So, like, the Mazda's, like, they, they're doing well, kind of capture that crowd in between. Awesome. Um, and so that repair cost is, like, just under $400, like mm-hmm. 380 bucks. It's pretty, pretty reasonable. Very affordable so, as well. Next up on the list, the Acura RDX. Um, just like Toyota has Lexus, Honda's got Acura. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a cool car. It's a fancy, it's a fancy, it's a fancy Honda. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're made in Ohio. Um, so, like, you know, not still kind of, you could kind of say they're American ish, but they're still an import in my book. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, they're just like re- uh, just over $400 for something like that on an annual. So, similar to a Honda, you might go to an Acura dealer and pay a little bit more versus going to the Honda dealer or something like that if you're going to a dealer or if you're going to a replica shop. But, yeah, they're still so. Again, going back to this, when your annual repair costs outside of maintenance is under 500 bucks, you don't need an extended warranty for these vehicles. <laughs> yeah, at all. I would agree. I mean, just take, like, like we, we did the video on the transmission, do's and don'ts. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to have some upcoming videos on other parts of uh, uh, maintenance and vehicle ownership. But, like, take care of your cars. Like, yeah. pay attention to the little things, and you can see your repair costs stay in these ranges all day long. Now, obviously, are you going to have conditions that come up? Sure. But, like, I think if it goes back to how you're driving and maintaining your vehicle, you know, it's, it can help you for sure. Well, speaking of Toyota, uh, the yeah. next crossover on the list is the Lexus RX. Yeah, once again, uh, just like the Acura, another fancy Toyota, right? Um, mm-hmm. RX, cool looking, um, looks good. Uh, it's also reasonable repair costs on this is from 430 bucks, just, awesome. you know, in that range. So not not terrible. So um, another one of my favorite vehicles, Subaru Crosstrek. Huge fan of Subarus. Kind of said that already, but very good blend. I, I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong on this, but the Subaru Crosstrek is actually rated by like Consumer Report, Car and Driver, like kind of those, you know, rating companies that the top crossover, right? It's mm-hmm. like top rated. Um, it's like number one rated, I think. And um, yeah, so like their average repair cost annually is 300 bucks like wow, a subaru once again could be considered an import to some degree right that's a very replicable vehicle i think and, and, and i'd say because in the subaru crossover lineup there's there's the forester the cross track there's several of them yeah right I'd say they all for, pretty much fall into this same descriptive category yeah excellent yeah. reliability low annual repair cost and if you live in a winter environment and you want like a good blend of car to all-wheel drive having those features like that's a great recommendation for something like that so now let's shift to the domestic crossovers yeah chevy equinox um is uh first on the list here you know that's a good vehicle um i've personally owned an equinox mm-hmm. um i think i've been so blessed I've, I've had good results out of it i know tons of friends who've owned them i've had families who own them and they've been very good and gm now is creating an, an actual ev version of an equinox and so um but overall pretty low repair costs like 310 just over 300 bucks for something like that Quite comparable so, to the subaru yeah economy car you know good good replica so um next would be a ford edge um mm-hmm. we have a ford edge in our fleet 
Um, and it's been pretty decent. Hadn't had to do too many things to it. Basically, just change oil. <laughs> right. And air filters and, you know, a couple basics. But, um, and there are, once again, it's a blend of like. And that vehicle, because he's in the fleet, sees a lot of different drivers. It does. <clears throat> yeah. A lot of different drivers, a lot of different road conditions. Yeah. So, um, but that vehicle is like just over 350 bucks a year, 360 ish, right, right there somewhere. So, yeah, very, very reasonable. Another domestic vehicle, Buick Enclave. Yeah, very much similar to the Equinox, similar chassis designs, engine designs, transmission. Sharp looking vehicle too. Yeah, it does look pretty good. Um, and that adds a little bit more cost. Um, it's four hundred and thirty dollars a year for something like that. So um, now overall, pretty good vehicle. I think you I think any vehicle in this line you can have a good replicable. You take care of it, pay attention to it, treat it like it's, you know, it has a value of money to it, mm-hmm. and you can have a very good long-term vehicle. All right, everybody, that's a wrap on our sedans and crossover show for today. And what I wanted to mention about the sedans and crossovers we discussed is that they are consistently recommended by people who buy them, automotive experts like Alex Stevens, and organizations like Consumer Reports and J.D. Power. It seems like a lot of people agree that these are great vehicles. They strike a good balance between performance, comfort, and dependability. For those of you who want to buy one of these vehicles we mentioned today and you want to avoid the hassle of dealing with car dealerships, reach out to us and ask for our direct help. On our website, thehomeworkguy.com, you will find a detailed write-up on our hassle-free car buying service. It's on the pull-down menu you find on the upper right-hand corner of the website. Not only does it make life very easy for you, but our service leads the industry with the best ROI. That's a return on investment average. You should also be aware that when you use our hassle-free car buying service, Either Liz or myself personally take every intake call. You get to talk directly to us, and we are the only show hosts on YouTube that offer this level of personalized service. Thanks to all of you out there in the audience for coming back. We greatly appreciate your loyalty, and if you want our direct help in your car deal and have any difficulty navigating the website, you can also text Liz today at 701-441-3399. She will steer you in the right direction. To talk directly with Alex Stevens about your car choices, jump on our website, thehomerguy.com, and to read up about Alex, just go to the website and click on the pull-down menu and find Ask the Auto Expert. Alex Stevens is available at a low introductory price, just 75 bucks for the phone call, and he's beyond knowledgeable and talented. As we mentioned before, Alex will continue to join me to give his take on different types of vehicles and different aspects of the cars and how to care for your vehicle so it doesn't leave you stranded. If you buy that $75 phone call with Alex, I promise you'll be delighted to talk to him. Either me or Elizabeth will connect you with Alex. To all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, home of the only totally hassle-free car buying service, signing off on behalf of the amazing Elizabeth and the entire hassle-free homework guy team. Thanks for listening. <laughs>